All right, welcome back. Uh, it's been a while, and I'm super excited that uh, my video got such a warm welcome. So let's just continue. And today we're gonna do uh, uh, a more in-depth tutorial, kind of how I set it up, uh, the whole live action compositing with Unreal Engine. And what we will cover in this video is uh, setting up all the gear and uh, what plugins you need. Uh, the equipment and how to record and how to export uh, the material. A uh, short intro about me is uh, I'm uh, a self-taught director and producer of uh, various films, uh, commercials and music videos for the last 15 years. And I always been uh, thrilled by making mixed reality with uh, combining 3D and C CG elements together with live action. And I think this year is really where it all comes together with all, you have the high-end graphics card that's are available and to a really uh, nice price actually. And also that Unreal is really uh, focusing on making their software work with uh, our purpose and uh, I think that's pretty cool so uh, that's great we're gonna go look at some example shots and some behind the scenes for from my test videos I've been doing uh, over the last months uh, and we're go gonna go through the pre-production of making free the world in Unreal Engine uh, I'm gonna show you one of the worlds I made uh, we're gonna set up live tracking, set up the base stations, the plugins, setting up the project with the blueprints, preparing for recording, setting up live view with ops and the syncing, uh, synchronize with time code and the recording. Uh, and we're probably gonna have time to look at the post production, how to export the CG and how to combine everything in After Effects. But since I don't have a green screen, we're gonna do it quite a little bit different, but uh, I think you're gonna get uh, some ideas how you can do it with the green screen. Uh, some must-haves. Uh, you need to have the HTC Y Pro uh, with at least two base stations. And uh, you need to have the Y Tracker. Uh, and also you need a computer with a high-end graphics card. I have a GTX 1080. Uh, probably gonna buy the RTX 2080 uh, and some kind of film camera DSLR or other I guess you could do, use an ARRI or whatever I'm using a Blackmagic RSM Mini Pro only because that's the one camera I use for everything else <laughs> uh, and if you want to do the live compositing on set uh, you probably need something similar to what I have. I have a Blackmagic Duo PCI card that, uh, that I put SDs in and SD out. And from uh, the main PC, uh, the S SDI is going to my MacBook, which has two Blackmagic Ultra Studio SD capture. And that's the computer that does the live onset compositing. Uh, and this is a flow chart on how how it works. So basically in the studio you have the HTC Vive Tracker and the camera mounted together. And the Vive Tracker of course sends uh, the tracking signal to HTC Vive, which goes into Unreal Engine on the main PC. And from the camera we have an SD output that goes into the Blackmatic Duo, uh, which then from Unreal Engine I have two SD outs, one with the computer generated background and the one with uh, just the video feed going out. And all this is going into OBS, uh, uh, which is pretty much a open source streaming software. Uh, and there I just do a quick key and we can watch it live as, it, uh, as we shoot it. And we output it to a some kind of monitor or television so everybody can watch it. That's pretty much it. Uh, so I was thinking of just, I don't know, let's just jump into it. Uh, let's have a look at some examples. The video is released, one of the videos I did. Uh, 
and it looks kind of like this but maybe you should pause this video and go have a look at that video right now I'll be here waiting so this video is uh, the first uh, one of the first videos we did with this setup so it's kind of an experimental video uh, and uh, we noticed we had a few problems with it it's uh, the one thing that's really hard with this is to s to get the talent to really stand on the uh, on the free to free background uh, so you really have to have time to experiment and find the right position. I'm gonna show you how how you do that later. Uh, and since this is new tech and I don't have a clue what I'm doing, I'm just experimenting. Uh, we had some problems with keyframes uh, that got fucked up on uh, two shots, and unfortunately, uh, we we didn't notice uh, until it was too late. So we had to just Fuck it, we have to release it, but uh, but the, the stuff you have to count on when you're working with non-production ready technology, I guess. So, uh, so be careful and take your time and really test things out before you go, do, go out and do live stuff. Uh, these guys were uh, in on it and they knew that this is really new tech and it could go straight to hell or it could be really good i think we we did pretty good actually but we have a few problems uh, but overall i think it looks really nice and of course you uh, uh, have to be really good at compositing the the standard uh, after effects stuff to make it look good in the end uh, uh, but overall i think it's turned out pretty good and the problem I was talking about is, you can see it here, where the background is a bit jitterish on some shots. But overall, the shots are smooth and working really good. Here you see the shot. So what happened is that the keyframe, I think the, I think the computer were, uh, I think the background the free were were too heavy for the computer to handle, so it, it couldn't write all the keyframes when I was recording the uh, li uh, when when I was recording live on set. Uh, so after that, uh, we're probably gonna record in much low lower quality to have uh, uh, to ease it up on the computer. So all right, let's have a look at some behind the scenes material. Here's, here's us testing out. And you can see it really glues together. It works really good. And here you can see, uh, uh, <laughs> quite a shame to show you this, but the green screen is not, it's probably the worst green screen I ever did. But uh, we were a small team, it was just me, uh, this is my uh, my friend Charlie, and he has no experience in the film business at all. So, but it, it was good having him lift stuff, uh, stuffs, and whatever. Uh, and I had the pleasure to having uh, having Martin, uh, who is a really really great photographer and uh, friend. Uh, here you can see us building the. I don't know why why it's doing that. Uh, we rented a studio here in Stockholm that uh, has a truss and everything, so it was quite easy to get everything up. But uh, the green screen setup made it really hard for me to key it in in the post. So here you can see the setup. Here's the computer with Unreal Engine on, and this Swedish snows really important. Uh, and this is the OBS with uh, two channels. I don't know why it's doing that. It's not working really good. You can, here you can see we're testing the alignment of the camera and the 3 the world. Uh, and it's smooth and working. Re oh. the, the jitter you see there is because uh, the tracker 
uh, gets blocked by someone or, s- or something from from the base station, so it's l- losing its tracking. And uh, so we built this green screen just for the day, the three of us, and we used the uh, Airy Sky Panel uh, RGB lights to, uh, to to fake the neon lights of the world. And here's Martin. He's a proof filmmaker, and has there some meaning with the uh, uh, with the HTC Y on it. And for this video, we choose uh, to rent a um, jib to make some smooth uh, pants and camera moves. As you can see, it fits really well into the world. And you see the jitter from we also had some problems with the HTC tracker because uh, since the base station is sending out a, a small IR light, if it's too bright in the uh, on the sensors, or uh, it can uh, throw the tracking off. So you can you can't use it in too bright environments. And here's the whole setup with the jib, the airy sky panels, and we uh, uh, th- these are the lights that lights the green screen. And you can see the really crappy green screen. And now you understand why I had such a bad time trying to key it. Uh, but it's all right. And here's one of the talents getting prepared for the first take, I guess. So this was really good because she could see where she were, were in the world and uh, could act. After. She, she got a better feel of how the video is going to look. Here's another talent. Some more shots of Martin working the crane. So here, here we have the, all the cables going down into the computer. And the third one. As you can see, the camera, uh, the video feed and the background are in perfect sync. And that's pretty wow moment. And we did something like this, put them on our roof. Crappy green screen again. Fuck me. Or some dancing stuff. And you can really see. Oh, we did. So that's a few behind the scenes shots, and you can really see the camera is locking into the free the background, which is awesome. So let's then, I guess, jump into. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna do the whole setup again. Uh, it will take a while, and it's quite complex. So if you don't understand something, just shoot a comment, and I try to answer as much as possible. I probably should do a live, live, uh, live stream too, so we could 
so I can answer your questions in real time. But let's, uh, or maybe if we should have a look at the uh, 3D background first. Let's do that. Let's have a look at uh, this world, finished world. Still loading. All right, here we go. It's quite a big uh, scene, so uh, it will not be smooth <laughs> showing you this. But basically what I did, because we were short on time, is that I bought... Uh, Unreal has a really great marketplace, so I bought uh, quite a few assets. And also Kitbash has a great uh, uh, shop for buying cool stuff. So here's the stage uh, with everything in it. Uh, and so this is uh, how I did it, is that I did a preview for, for the client. Uh, and uh, then we did a session over uh, where she logged into my computer and I showed her the screen and we worked together for it and did small stuff like this, changed the text to, to the name of the group and change that, uh, can we change color that, can we add a house there, and it's really cool to be able to do it straight on the spot. Uh, and, and one thing that's really awesome too is that you can play in your own world. <laughs> it's still a game engine, you know? Whoop! Yup! So this is really cool. But uh, I did something more uh, to add a bit of depth. I added a, a train going by. Uh, in some shots you see it and it, it's add a bit of more realism to it or something. So that's cool. But basically I just bought a shit ton of stuff. Uh, if you are a 3D modeler you could probably just make your own stuff, but uh, and it's just a matter of you know pulling stuff in. We need a new building here. Let's put a building there. And probably doesn't have a shader for this. It needs to compile the shaders or something. But it's super fun to do, and uh, it's an easy workflow, super fun. But anyhow, let's create a new project, new project. Let's do this from the beginning. Uh, I used, you can use whatever, a blank, I guess. Create project. Don't save. So the key part, if we uh, if we start with equipment, uh, I'm not gonna show you how to uh, install the HTC Vive and whatnot. Uh, that's something you have to figure out yourself. It's not hard, uh, but. Uh, in here, in my small office, I have one base station there that's almost by the ceiling and pointing down, and I have one over here pointing down. Uh, but on, on the set of the video I showed you, I had two more uh, that were in a square, so I could cover as much as uh, much area as possible to have more freedom to move the camera. Uh, for the next shoot, I'm probably gonna buy two or three more base stations because we had some problems with uh, the tracker getting uh, uh, blocked by something. So we need more uh, base stations to pick up the tracking signal. But anyhow, all right, let's jump in. The first thing we do is start an empty actor, uh, and this is going to be our scene mover where we can move the camera position without affecting the camera relative camera tracking data camera tracking position 
that's good because we want to be able on set to move the camera around in the world because in scene one we maybe we're gonna shoot at that uh, angle but in scene two we're gonna shoot at this angle so it's quick way to move uh, move the camera around and now after that we're starting we're doing the camera tracker and put it as a child to the scene mover and Lastly, the, the camera tracker is going to be the one that has the camera tracking data. And let's name this live camera and put it in camera tracker. So let's add some scripting to the camera tracking. And let's, let's delete that one and remove everything except for event tick begin play. And the first thing we do is get tracked devices position or orientation. And from out orientation, we drag it into a combined rotators. And this is only a backup because sometimes the track white tracker is flipping axis. So you have to on the fly be able to fix that and that's what you do with this one but at the moment it doesn't do anything it's just in case something happens and it's going out to a set relative location nay rotation default scene root which is uh, what we want and from this one we're going out into a set relative location and also default scene root so from out position into this one and to make everything tick and here we have a complete uh, blueprint it's super easy uh, let's see if it works something happens when you put simulation it's not this one uh, haven't figured out a way to get the right device ED it depends on in which order you turn stuff on and early today when I test things out, I had number six for the wife tracker. Let's see if it's the wife, six number wife tracker. No, it's not. Then we have to do, uh, just go backwards, I guess, till we find the right ID. Four, compile. Something happened. It's not the right one. Three, compile. It's not working. Let's see if number two. It's not that one. Maybe you need to turn off and turn on simulation. No. Nope. Let's go back to six, see what happens. Nothing happens. What, what I think we need to do then is restart, save everything. And I have a Mac Im Apple image on a PC. So let's start this up again. All right, open our level up again and open the blueprint. Let's see if we are not working. Then just keep trying more. Compile. No. Nope. Let's go all the way to zero, zero, just to rule everything out. It's not that. One, compile. I don't know why it's not working. It should be working. Get track device, default scene root, default scene root. Two, compile, nothing. Uh, 
Eh, nothing. I don't know why it's not. Here we go. Number five. Perfect. Number five today. My not lucky number. Okay. We probably need to see... Uh, we would like to see... Uh, better what's going on. Uh, so let's add a mesh as a child. Static mesh. And here we can add axis. And you guys are probably not seeing the axis. I'm going to show you how to do it. Uh, you go to oh, view options. And show folder, uh, show developers content and show C++ classes. So if you have that up, uh, you're able to choose the axis guide. So let's have a simulation. And it seems to be working pretty good. Uh, important thing is to have the green uh, LED light pointing forwards, then you should everything should be correct. So the x-axis is forward for me right now. And it's, I guess that's okay. I don't know, probably. Cool. So now we have the tracking up and working uh, and you have to do uh, uh, move everything, camera tracking blueprint into scene mover and live camera like that. And just assets, just clean this up. Player start assets, so we know what we're looking at. So here's our maybe we could do it like this. Create folder. What the f scene? Let's move everything into scene. And if we choose simulate, we should. We have everything. Ding, 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 ding. So let's mount this on the camera. Great. <clears throat> and what we have now is we need to install a few plugins. We need. Uh, like Magic Media Player, boom. Uh, and that's something you need to install from the Unreal Marketplace. Uh, we'll wait with the restart now. Uh, we need uh, timecode, synchronizer. Yes. We need media, Apple Pro. Let's try that. It's a, it's a new one. Uh, media Framework. And what do you need more? Composure. Let's let's start with that and see if we need to add more plugins. So <coughs> this camera has an SD out going into the Blackmagic uh, capture card. Uh, so that's what we're gonna do now. We need to get our time code and our video feed into Unreal Engine. And what we do is, I guess, just uh, we have to create a new me media profile. Profile, Black Magic Media Profile. Just configure, I guess. Uh, go back. Edit. So media sources. Uh, we have a Blackmagic media source, and I know that it's Declink to one and thirty frames per second. Time code format. After weeks of trying, I know it's widths. And I just use RGB, uh, ten bit. Synchronization. Uh, we not want to sync with engine's timecode since we we are we we are feeding the engine our timecode from the camera, and I want to burn in the timecode. Uh, timecode provider, overhead project settings, 
choose Blackmagic SD SDI in, input and choose Techlink Duo 1 again. Timecode format widths and you want to gen lock it to the same. Bam. And if you look at our timecode provider up here, it should change. Yeah, and now it's the timecode of the camera. And if you don't have uh, this little bar, you could go up here, dev developer tools, and choose timecode provider. Boom. So you can see it. So now we have a timecode, we have a tracked uh, HTC Vive going in. What should we do then? We need to combine the 3D picture with uh, the video feed. So what I do uh, then is uh, I need to add a media bundle. A black magic media bundle and choose black magic black magic media source and the same the input ten bit RGB output and here you can add the lens parameters for the lens on distortion or lens distortion but uh, haven't played around with it yet haven't it, it's something on my to do I like to burn time frame code so I can uh, know what's going on and then we should have yes so then we have the camera with perfect sync uh, just leave it there uh, and what we want to do uh, next is you can do it in several ways. Now you now you're pretty much set up. You can do you can, you can record the tracking and you can, but you can't view the output. So so my way of doing stuff is I need to get two outputs from Unreal Engine: one with the video feed, one with the video feed, and one with the free the background. So let's just start with getting the free the background out. Uh, and we do it either way you can do it like this uh, and go up to window and uh, developer tools and media capture and you can just use uh, viewport capture cameras and choose the live camera and we need to sh make an output media black magic black magic media output and we can choose uh, 3d world output sdi and i know that one i put my sd out on the uh, uh, third uh, port and let's just choose 10 bit width and that's perfect so if we go back to media capture we can choose free the world output SDI and if you start capture now we should have we have a picture so we have a picture from free the background going in I think you guys are capable of managing how to use ops, uh, but later on I'm gonna show you the process. But let's just focus on Unreal Engine, otherwise it gets too jumpy back and forth. But we have an output that's working, and then we need to have uh, the SDI, uh, the video feed, go through Unreal Engine into uh, ops. To get the SDI out, out, we need to create a new Blackmagic output and we call it video feed output SDI. And I know that that's my fourth 
Let me choose everything here. 10 bit. Could burn. Time code. So here we need to feed the SDI. And by doing that, we're going to use the Composure component. So go uh, Window, uh, Developer Tools, I guess, or where do we find it? I don't know. It's just there for me. Yeah, it's probably there. Let's create a new comp, empty comp shot, and create add layer element. And we want to use the media plate. And go back to details and choose input, media texture. And we can go to black media bundle inner assets and just put it there. Bam, we have it. And we can do output, output pass, media capture, but we have a render target asset. Not yet, we do. We can do media capture and choose video feed output SDI. And now we have we have two channels, one with CG and one with the uh, Blackmagic device going out. And that's great. Uh, so now we have uh, sync with everything. So we have it free the background moving. And we have cool. Did you get that? It's quite complex. Uh, and what now? So that's pretty much it. Uh, but the thing you need to worry about is that you need, we need to uh, go back to scene, live camera, and probably add a blueprint so we can add on a mesh static mesh we need to sh see the camera in the viewport and let's add on scene cam now we need to align this one up close as possible and we need to change the snap value to 1 so we can get really tight that's pretty much it and like that and that's just for to be able to show let's move it back to a child of that one because now we need to align the camera Because the tracking data is quite far from the monitor, so what I did, I think around here is good for my camera, but you need to uh, you need to uh, figure that out for your own uh, camera, and it's just a lot of trial and error. So let's see what's going on here. Uh, have a media capture, the freed world is going out. We need to choose the live camera blueprint capture. And if we play now. And then we maybe could turn off the axis on camera tracker blueprint uh, 
and just make it non-visible right now. Compile. This is pretty much how I shot the, uh, the video I showed you earlier. Uh, and I'm gonna show you how to record. Uh, uh, what we want to do then is go to just quick save developer tools and choose sequence recorder over here and choose which three elements we want to record let's add those here boom 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 and to record a camera movement uh, we uh, let's choose test sequence Perfect. I think we should doesn't need to do anything more. Let's try. Let's do a recording. Record and play. So the first thing I do, because there's a problem uh, to sync the video and the 3D background in post, because uh, you need uh, a marker that shows both in the video feed and in the free world. So what we have been doing to get that marker, you still have to do a manual sync, but in the beginning of each take, you just do a quick tilt and hold it there and tilt back up. Because that's something you are able to see in both the video feed and the free world sequence. So let's do what we are recording right now. Let's see if this gets recorded. Cool. Stop recording. Donk. Test sequencer successfully recorded. Open test sequence. And as you can see, we have the camera recorded. Uh, but you have no keyframes. And that's because uh, if we, we we would like to be able to maybe change some settings in the camera after the fact. And that's why we are recording into the camera tracker blueprint. That means that you can also move the camera afterwards because you're on set and you're recording. But then when you get back to your office and start doing the post-production, you maybe want to use a different angle or different position of the camera, then it's possible to move the camera without moving the tracking, without messing with the tracking data. So here it is, it's fully recorded. And with the marker, boom. And that this is how I do it. And afterwards, I just uh, go up here, render this movie to a video image frame sequence, choose my options. You probably should, ah, now you can use uh, Apple Prures, which is great. I mainly use PNGs or uh, a, a, what you say in English, AVI, AVI, in Swedish we say AVI, but in English I guess it's AV. Uh, and just render it out and then comp it in uh, After Effects with the real uh, data. So that's how we do it. Uh, boom. That's the whole process. Uh, let's. Uh, I would like to show you how I sync it with uh, the live comp. So I'm gonna do something special now uh, since I don't have a green screen here. And that's uh, just to be able to show you how to do uh, the live compositing. So this is another step. Uh, first, we can, we can remove remove the sequence, so now I have the original camera. 
we go back to composure and we add a new layer element because what I want to do now is output just uh, a box and composite it here on my desk so you can see how to align the camera and uh, uh, make the sync work so let's add a CG, la CG layer uh, and we need to add a little cube let's make that smaller boom and we're gonna create a new layer the layers you get from here let's just name it CG CG layer and we want to move the box into the CG layer go back to the comp composure uh, or C C CG element and down here at input capture actors we're going to choose to include from the layer CG uh, I'm also gonna hide uh, the background so we got it just black and white black and white cool uh, and this one we need to output to uh, output output add an output media capture yes output free the world and now it's stop the free world uh, clear like that so now we have the box over here outputting and we need to output the camera put that on there we go the camera and let's have a look where the camera is I lost the tracking see if the camera tracking jumps back yeah there it is so I'm gonna try to align the, the box on my desk by eye Let's see how it Cool. Like that. Save. Uh, and one thing that's more important too is to have the right uh, camera settings. And this is a DSLR. I have um, Sigma 18 to 35 on. And it's roughly around 25 because this is a smaller sensor and this is a bigger sensor on the camera let's see what we're doing all right so that there's a box this is just for testing purposes we need to add a filter so we can remove the black i have a luma key here let's that perfect close and as you can see it's not really really in sync right now there's a few stuffs that's not working and it's probably a delay let's see if it's uh, add a video delay for 42 milliseconds let's start with that let's see what's happening yeah pretty pretty darn good but you can see we have some problems with when you move the camera up and down let's see if you can figure that out uh, probably gonna have to align the box a bit better move it back let's see something over there Let's see how we do it. 
So we're probably gonna move the box a bit closer. We still have a problems with moving the camera up. It's something that's not aligned. And it's probably, and this is why we need to do the calibration. This is by eye. We should figure out a way to do this much better. Uh, so probably we're gonna move the camera a bit forward. Let's see what's, if it's better. Uh, the preview enable is keeps uh, getting unticked. I don't know why, but let's just deal with it. I lost the tracking. Let's see if the tracking comes back. There we go. So it's not. It's not really there yet, but maybe we need to move the camera back, I don't know. But it's pretty, pretty close, but not, not yet. Let's see if we move the camera back. So we're moving the camera back on the camera tracking axis. Let's, let's overshoot it and see, see what's going on. I don't know why it keeps turning itself off, but... So this is, this is worse. So let's keep moving the camera forward. Let's overshoot it. Keep pressing the output. Output enable. Now we maybe need to move, move the move box a bit. Ah, God damn it! That's pretty close. So this is what you have to do for a while to find it out, uh, the right, right position of the camera. But luckily I did it earlier today, so I can show you. Let's go back to the tutorial, switch, yes, save everything. And open up our uh, earlier. Let's see if it just works out of the box. Of course not. Let's see what we need to do. Uh, enabled. Enabled. A media capture maybe. Oh, here we go. 
play. Let's see if it's, yeah. Because here I did the calibration of the camera. It's almost like it's there. And here you see a jitterish because something is hiding the sensors. They probably have to tweak the delay a bit. But it's it's almost there. So that's how you do it, pretty much. Uh, and what did we say that we were about to talk about? Yeah, so... Uh, what I have here in, in OBS is just two devices. With the Ultra Studio with the background. With the video feed and and uh, now we're not going to see anything but with the free the world and to sync everything so so what i noticed is that the video uh, this the free the background is taken for this project roughly 42 milliseconds to render and that creates a delay that you need to add in obs to get a live sync uh, and this is a number you need to experiment with because you maybe have heavier scenes that takes a lot more time to render and you need to add more milliseconds uh, but that's pretty much it that's it I guess and this is rather complex so feel free to shoot me a comment on YouTube or if you have better ways to do this uh, this is just me, what, what I come up with. Uh, so, so just to recap, we have, uh, we have uh, looked at how to make a free world and how I did it and how to set up the live tracking uh, and post-production, how to export CG and uh, compositing and syncing CG and live action. I think that could be another video, uh, but now you know how I sync it. I do it with the tilt dink before each take. I tilt the camera, which get uh, the tilt both in the camera tracking data and on the video feed. And uh, I guess that's uh, that's what I come up with. And I'm eager to hear what uh, solutions you guys will have for everything. So good luck and uh, have a great day.